One type of series that we can analyze quite efficiently is what's called an arithmetic series. These are series and sequences in which elements change by just a fixed amount as I iterate through my sequence. So let's take a look. An arithmetic sequence is one of the form a, ak plus b. So a and b are somehow fixed here or constant and k changes. So I start at the element a plus b, the next element is 2a plus b, then 3a plus b, and so on. So I'm only changing by a each time. So as an example, we can look at 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. This is an example of an arithmetic sequence, and I can write it as 2k minus 1. If I plug in k equals 1, I get 1, k equals 2 gives me 3, k equals 3 gives me 5, and so on. Uh, another example would be, say, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, and in this case, ak is just 3 times k. So fine, these have the nice property that I don't change in a very complicated way between elements of my se series or sequence. And in particular, I can show a very nice result if we had some time to do some proof-based math that if I want to add up elements of a, an arithmetic series, all I have to do is average the first and last elements and multiply by the number of things in my series. So this is a very slick trick to add up many, many numbers in one very quick computation. So let's look at an example. So here's a classic one from the, the, the lore of mathematics. You know, this one, uh, the story goes back to Gauss in the 1800s that it was claimed, you know, perhaps apocryphally, that he solved this problem in, mi in just a few set minutes when he was assigned it as a punishment by his grade school teacher for mouthing off. She says, oh, go and add up the first hundred numbers. That'll keep you busy for a couple hours. Turns out little Gauss could do it very quickly, and we can too, using this trick. So for this, I say, all I need to do is take the first and last elements, 1 and 100, average them, and then divide by the number of elements in the list. So there's 100 things here. Right, this 100 gives me this. So this is simply 100 times 101 over 2, which is 50 times 101, so 5,050. Very elegant, I think. I don't know if the story about Gauss is actually true, but you know, it's a nice story. Let's look at a similar arithmetic sequence. Again, there's 50, there's 50 terms in this. It would take us a very long time to have to add these up by hand. We can use our formula quite nicely and say that this is equal to the first element is j equals 1, so 2 minus 1 is 1. When j is equal to 50, I get 99. So I average those, and then I'll multiply by the number of things in the list. So I get 50 times 50 divided by 2, so 50 times 25, which is 1,250. So again, uh, I think a very, very nice way to do a kind of complicated looking problem like this is to use this formula for arithmetic series. One more that's abstract here, right? So here we have capital N terms in our series. So we can let N change. So this is very nice. If I want to add up the first 10 integers, I make capital N 10. If I want to add up the first 1,000 integers, I just put capital N as 1,000. So is there a nice trick here? Well, for sure. Right, this is just equal to the first term, 1, 
plus the last term is capital N. I average those. And I multiply by the number of terms in the sequence, the series, n. So I get n times n plus 1 over 2. So a very nice way of saying if I want to add up the first however many integers, I just have to plug straight into this formula. So this is actually, I think, a very impressive result. If I wanted to add up the first 1 million integers, I could spend the rest of mine and your life sitting there and adding them. Or I could just plug into this formula and be done in about 10 seconds.